Hello again. God, I've had more changes than Beyonce today. And I am in, well, I have just left the lovely little Scottish border village of Kirk Yetham. And the reason I'm in Kirk Yetham today is because it was something that piqued my interest about um, the gypsies that settled here in the 1800s. And I was in search, I've been in search of the gypsy palace, which I actually found. And I shall tell you a little bit about that as we go on. Kirk Yetham is a picturesque village lying only a mile to the west of the Scottish-English border. Today it's known as the end of the Pennine Way Walk, but in 1898 it attracted national press coverage when an elderly man was crowned King of the Scottish Gypsies. His palace, the survivor of two former rival royal residences in the village, can still be seen today. So who was the King of the Gypsies and why did this small borders village have two palaces? The first official recognition of a Scottish Gypsy leader was in 1506. King James IV acknowledged Anthony Garwin as the Earl of Little Egypt in a letter which implored the King of Denmark to give Anthony and his company safe passage through Denmark. Little Egypt was not a place but a people. Egypt was the supposed ancestral homeland of the Romani people and the derivation of the word Gypsy. By 1540, leadership passed to the Farr family. James V granted John Farr and his son authority to police and punish their subjects. It was with this legislation that the tradition of the Gypsy kings and queens was affirmed. The early 18th century found several of the Gypsy clans settled in Kirk Yetham. There are conflicting tales of how they received favourable leases by the landowner Sir William Bennett of Grubbit. One story tells of how they were granted the land after a gypsy saved William's life in the Siege of Neymar in 1695, now in present-day Belgium. It was on this land that cottages were built, including the royal palaces. The palaces themselves were not larger or more grand than their neighbours. Instead, their status was bestowed upon them by their regal residents. The first Gypsy King and Queen recorded at Kirk Yetim were Patrick Farr and his wife Jean Gordon. Their reign spanned the 1730s and 40s. We're not certain of exactly when Gypsy Palace was actually built, though it seems likely that it was first used as a Gypsy dwelling in the 17th century. However, we do know that Queen Esther Farr Blythe, perhaps the most famous Gypsy monarch of all, took up residence in the Gypsy Palace on November the 16th, 1861. Visitors who came from all over the world to visit Queen Esther also claimed to have seen two large swords hanging from the ceiling. One was the royal ceremonial gypsy sword and Queen Esther claimed that the other was taken as a souvenir from the Battle of Flodden Field in 1513. After Queen Esther's death in 1883, the gypsy palace was renovated by the local wool manufacturer and owner of much of the village, Peter Govenlock. It is probable that the renovation included the addition of the porch with its unusual arched window and the replacement of the original thatched roof with a slate one. Queen Esther's son, Charles Farr Blythe, continued to live in the palace, though 15 years were to pass before his coronation as the new Gypsy King. The coronation took place on May 30, 1898 and was a huge event with over 10,000 people descending on Kirk Yetham. King Charles II, as he was known, continued to live in the Gypsy Palace until his death four years later. The weather is very ominous, as always, in the borders and Northumberland. We've got rain showers coming over every now and again, so I'm putting the waterproof on, taking it off, but do you know what? It's warm, it's windy, so at least I'll be dry. Um, he has the showers coming now, so I'm just going to put this away and get my waterproof on and I'll bring you back. But look behind me. Now, I don't have a, a route plan as such. 
I've looked at my map and I've got my map. Um, however, my plans for in you know when I hike change constantly as I'm going because I'll look at a hill and I'll say, oh, I want to go up that one. So I have a rough, a sort of rough idea of where I want to go. Um, but that could all change. I am also looking for the right. Let me get this right. The stop stains, which is um a bit of a viewpoint and has a bit of history attached to it as well. We've got um, right in the distance at the back there, um, steer rig, white law, and then black hag, which will lead you down to the Kerr and the shale, which is right in the background, just past the trees. You can't actually see it properly. So these hills here, over there, we've got Cold's Mouth Hill, right in the back there, which I did a video on. And then we've got Green Humbleton, which is there. Behind that is Eccles Cairn, which I've been on. And then that one just below Coldsmouth is Humbleton Swire, which has a hill fort on it. This little one on the tree line there. So I parked in Kirk Yetham. You can come further up the road on the Pennine Way and park down there. But I chose to park at Kirk Yetham just to extend the walk. And you come over the brow of this little saddleback here. Relax as they call it in Scotland. Um, and just basically follow the Pennine Way. Joins on the St Cuthbert and the St Cuthbert's Way, sorry. Um, and you just follow the path and I'm on St Cuthbert's Way now. I was going to go up this bit here. But there's poos, and to be fair, there's cows on the top of um, Greenside Hill. Great, um, great, great. Oh, I have to check. Hang on one second. Um, so, yes, there's cows right on the top of there. I've got a feeling that um, the stop stains, there might be coos on there. But we'll have a look and see. <laughs> Just beautiful. I've spotted a possible canvas spot. In fact, I've spotted a few actually. <laughs> this one here is called Shield Now. Humbleton and Humbleton Swire and there's the top of Coldsmouth Hill and coming along here just over there is Eccles Cairn and I'm just 
are following St Cuthbert's Way again like I say from Kirky side this time so when you get to here you can go this way to Elston Burn on the St Cuthbert's Way it takes to Elston Burn you walk down there and you head for Throat Burn and you come back along and it'll bring you back and around the back of here and back down into Kirkyham but I'm going to follow the Pennine Way A one and a half mile walk into the hills brings you to these ancient stones, the Stobb Stains. They are the focus of a dramatic ride out in the annual festival week in June. For much of the medieval period, the stones marked one point on the eastern boundary of an estate owned by the Abbey of Kelso. When the monks left in the 1500s, this land, bounded on the west by the Halter Burn, became disputed territory between Scotland and England. It was long claimed as common land by the people of Yetham, who were not above taking direct action. When the English Earl of Tankerville impounded some of their cattle in 1753, 30 or 40 infuriated Scots in a violent and forceful manner took them back. The stones now lie just a few metres from the Scotland-England border, which largely follows the eastern edge of what was Yetham Common. The Stop Stains play a major part each year in Yetham's Festival Week. A spectacular ride out takes place on the Wednesday of the second week in June during the festival. Over 100 riders follow the border line, which is also the northern and eastern bounds of the parish, galloping up the Halterburn Hills to the Stop Stains. There, a ceremony takes place involving the Bari Gadji and the Bari Manushi, Romani names signifying the best man and best girl the principles of Yetham's festival week. The cavalcade then returns to Kirk Yetham led by a piper. The Yetham tradition of riding the bounds up to the Stobb Stains probably goes back to the 1700s, but is first mentioned in print as part of the crowning of the Gypsy King, Charles Blythe I, in 1847.
so as per usual I have come off piste and I'm off the track of St Cuthbert's Way and the Pennine Way and I'm heading um where am I heading to no idea I'll find out when I get to the top and I can say I think I'm heading to Steerig but I've gone a bit off the path just because I fancied a little climb up a hill another hill like there isn't enough hills around here so I know where I am I just looked at the map White Law Nick I'm coming up the side of White Law White Law Nick White Law Nick that's a mouthful um to go onto White Law Steerig and then onto Black Hag and then I'm gonna might go down the valley I think there's a low Pennine way route so if I can get on that to go back we'll see when I get up there because uh, steer rig from White Law is a canny steep climb if anybody's done it you know I love a good climb me over the wind but we've just hit the views of the Cheviots. I know they're boring to you see them but I'm not. So there's the tours. The tours.
dreams holding us closer meadows of our youth a hundred and seven days they're calling it backwards our dreams holding us closer here follow the burn and it takes you onto the Pennine Way or part of the Pennine Way. Not quite sure which part of the Pennine Way but we'll see when we get down there. Haven't decided which way I'm gonna go. I'm just messing about in the hills. It's beautiful. Um the way it's nice to have dropped down out of the wind actually because it was just oh it was just relentless. Proper head basher. Proper head basher. But this is a lovely path. It's an actual path look behind the ferns. It's lovely. There, that's it. You can see now. Sorry, I've just had chocolate biscuit. So there you have it, white law from the other side. And I'm just 
dropping down into Halter Burn. And if you look, Halter Burn goes all the way up, up in the middle to the Kerr. And this is Steel Rig up here. What a beautiful little valley. I've seen it many times when I've been up on the hills on these ridges, but I've never been down into it. So this is a a lovely treat and the wind isn't as bad it's still here the wind but it's not as bad just gorgeous 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 day by a little ruin i'm gonna go have a look at that see what that is changes than Beyonce today. Um, so I decided not to go straight back into Kirk Yeshem. I am currently um, skirting around the side on the Pennine Way towards the shell but I'm not going to the shell. I'm going to turn right underneath the Kerr and I'll show you on the map later. Um, I'm going I'm just skirting around Latchley Hill. So there's Latchley Hill, another one and then the one I passed this morning which look like a nice little three or four some ridge to do so I'm going to save that for another day I'm not doing that today um, just because I don't want to do too much and you know do everything all at once so yeah so this is what I'm doing now I'm just skirting along this deer fence up, um, up the side of the burn and I'm going to cut in I'll show you one second up here and I'm going to cut in between oh sorry in between there and go around the side of this which is Latchley Hill which is 400 and 430 meters I think I'll double check so there's Latchley Hill, Wild Goose Hill and Sunnyside Hill Hello I was just having a little sit down here at the bottom of the curve and I just thought I would um, jump on and quickly sit this and just to say thank you so so much I can't believe I got 500 followers sub subscribers followers what is it um, I'm so not YouTube savvy <laughs> yeah 500 it said 540 at the minute like that's mental utter utter like madness just me driveling on about the Cheviot Hills and it's funny because I get a lot of um oh while well, I think on oh, thank you very much Auntie Portal for um, because um, I think I must have got between 80 and 100 of those 540 subscribers from your mention last week on your video of Cold War so thank you so much I owe you a muggle beer lad um hope you're having a nice time in wherever you are I think I know where you are Anyway, so yes, 500, I can't believe it, it's just madness. I never thought like, oh sorry there's my hand, you see, because I haven't got my um, handheld thing on, I couldn't be bothered to get out of my bag. Um, that's not for a YouTube professional, I'm just looking to make sure there's nobody coming over the hill. Hang on, I'm going to get my thing out because my hand's hurt. Look, it looks like I'm hiding in the grass, well I am actually, to be honest with you, so yeah. I um, thanks so much, 500 for subscribers. I keep saying, what is it, followers? Because obviously, you know, I'm obsessed with Instagram. Um, oh, thank you from the bottom of my chunky heart. Honestly, I appreciate every single one of you. If even if you don't watch or comment or anything or like, just it's lush to know that people like my videos. Yeah. Um, massive thumbs up from each and every one of you from the bottom like I say the heart of my bottom yeah the heart of my bottom and um, I will continue to do videos 
Um, obviously, I do them weekly just because I like to enjoy my time in the hills. But I do love to also share my hikes with you because it does, and it does, it inspires other people, and I love that it does. Like, bless you, all of you. Um, even if it just encourages one person to get out in the hills or go for a walk, then it's all it's worth my trudging around and driveling on incessantly into the camera about nothing. Um, you know, I'm not the most um, extroverted person, you know, but I try my best. So yeah, thank you very much. Lots of love to each and every one of you. Hey, that video just went on record itself. What's that all about? I was just thinking, um, I have been out wild camping, but I did a video it last time after the last one I did. Um, just because I just wanted to be out in the hill on my own and not have to like video it. But I will be videoing more wild camps. Um, what else will I be doing? I don't know. I'll just bring you along. If I think you're going to be interested, then I'll bring you along. But you know, I, I do post a lot, a lot on Instagram because I get a lot of people messaging me asking for roots and things like that and um, I mean I'm not a mountain leader but I do have quite a good knowledge of my local hills and the hills on the borders and stuff like that as you know and people do ask me quite often how do you know like how do you know all the hills well because when I first started I would just go tramping around and look at the map and if something and if I saw something in the distance I'd be like oh I'll go over there and have a look at that and then when I got home I'd be looking at the maps and then I'd be researching them name places that were of interest to us um, so yeah that's how I just know the hills I just know the hills because I hike them all the time so I am going to Oh, do you know what? I could sit here all night, but um, I need to get home. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful. Can highly recommend doing the Kirk Yetham side. Um, I know a lot of people are going over Cheviot and stuff like that, but there's more. And I've found that out. I love my Cheviot hills. I, and I say they're mine because they are. They're mine. Um, so look after them. But um, yeah, um, there's more, there's more out there. And like, I really enjoyed the Moffat Hills last week. So I'll be going back there. Um, I bet it's lush in the autumn and then the winter, but bar be careful. Um, yeah, just enjoy it. Enjoy getting out, you got to. Cause honestly, if I can't get out, does my head in. I worked indoors on Thursday and Friday and I was literally climbing the walls, properly climbing the walls. Um, and my job's going to be changing, so I'll be working indoors more. So, yeah, I'm not sure how my head will go with that, but it is what it is, what it is, what it is. So, if in doubt, just get out. So I will catch you all on the flip side. And yeah, thank you again. Lots of love to each and every one of you. Got to stretch the legs out like. There's Latchley Hill there and it goes on to Sunnyside Hill but I am going down this little track here down this valley and it'll take me to Yetham and then I'll have to walk along the road to Kirk Yetham where my car is. Right underneath the Kerr here and I've did a video and on that video there is some of the plane wreckage which is on the side this side of the hill so if you fence line runs up the middle there if you get up to the trig point and come down towards this valley you'll see the uh the plane wreckage it's sort of over 
that way. It's just on the side of the hill here. There. Well now just coming around the side of Latchley Hill and if you look in the distance that is wide open hill that comes into Kirk Yetham. Sorry, Yetham and Kirk Yetham on the St Cuthbert's Way. It's the highest point on the Sis of East St Cuthbert's Way. It's very prominent in this area when you get onto this side of the valley from College Valley and then Beaumont Valley. And there, there's some coo tracks, blinking cows or somewhere. I kind of see them. I think they're hiding. They're hiding down there somewhere. I did go past two cows in the little one earlier and they were fine. But these look like big hooves. Unless the whole, no, they're not horse hooves, they're bloody cow hooves. Horse hooves are. I know what horse hooves are like, I used to have horse. Um, definitely cow hooves. I was thinking they might have been riding the borders with the horses. Might have been the border rides. I'm sure Emma, Emma said it was the border rides this weekend. But anyway, right, you don't want to see pictures of mud. So I'm going to get cracking. Hey, it's just lost, there's nobody around. I've only seen two people and I saw a group of hikers in the distance coming from College Valley down to Kirk yet and they must have been on the St Cuthbert's Way. Looked like an organised walk. But yeah, right, I'm going to get cracking. Ta-da! off again. Hats on, the hats off. Look, there's the curb behind us. Kerbin Farm's lovely. It's right out of the way. They had an English flag up. So it must be an English family that resides there. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Look, still the hills behind us. Oh, oh the curve's looking mighty. Hang on. Let me spin you. Spin you around. Look at that. Shows a beauty. That is the mighty Kerr. If you haven't been up the Kerr, you can do it from um, Hethpool and Elston Burn and that way in the shell, or you could do it from Kirk Yetham. It's probably quicker doing it from this side, coming up this track, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, so I'm getting more res into the residential area now. Ugh, never mind. Oh, that's where I skirted around the side of this morning, I think. Yeah, it is. There you go, I'm back where I started. What a lovely circular that was. I shall uh, keep going and bring you back if anything exciting happens. Or there's anything nice to look at, which I'm sure there will be. Sunnyside Hill 
and that is Wild Goose Hill and that is Latchley Hill oh sorry up there so that was the one I was looking at you can walk right along the tops of those it's a little bit up and down but you go from the other side from Kirk Yetham to the other side of that sunny side hill you come up the other side and then you come down towards the trees down there and then you come along this ridge then up onto Goose Hill that way and then you come along this ridge da -da -da. Da -da -da. so they're all quite joined together quite nicely little ups and downs and then you could maybe finish off with the Kerr well I thought I might have got away with it but I don't think I have there's some cows ahead on the farm track. Not fun. I'm trying to go stealthily, but it's not working. Walk with purpose. One's looking at us already. Oh, there's tons. There's tons. I have no escape because if I go up the bank side, there's some on the bank side as well. Oh, shit. Oh, do you think they can smell the fear? Oh, the camera. Oh, one's looking at us. She doesn't look very happy. Like, might have to hide under the bridge. Can you ring Mountain Rescue if you're hiding under a bridge from a herd of cattle? Oh shit! They're all looking at us. Oh man, there was the black ones. These ones. This. Oh, is she moving? You just stay there, lovely. Oh, I got chased once when I had Riley's dad's dog. I had to jump the fence and leave the dog in the field. But they were the cows at uh, Langley Ford and their nuts them. Oh, I might have to hide under this bridge, like. Stay there, girls. Stay there, you're all right. Oh, can you hear the fear in my voice? Talking, talking and walking. Right there's the bridge. I can hide under. Stay there, girls. You're fine. All right, ladies. All ladies together. Ladies supporting ladies. I'm not going to hurt your babies. This is the only thing I'm scared of in the countryside. I'm not scared of now else, apart from heights, of course. But cows. Probably thinking, stop filming us. I have no escape route. Look, she's staring at us. Don't make eye contact. Stay. Oh shit, stay. Look at me, she's not doing that. There's one oh, coming. Stay there, lasses. Hey there lasses, I'm not going to hurt you, just carry on doing what you're doing. Oh shit, there's one up there, fuck, look there's one up there, oh, so there's one on my, in my way, stay there ladies, beautiful girls, I think if I pay them compliments they'll not do anything. She's gonna get a fright when I walk up behind her. Go on, lass. On you go. Oh, God, look. There's bloody more. For Christ's sake. Go on, lass. I mean, they're beautiful. You stay there. No, stay. Might have to hide in this barn for the night. She's following us. No. Oh, Jesus Christ, there's a friggin' bull. What the fuck? What the shit in hell? Christ on a bike. 
I wonder. Look at the size of them. Fuck. He's right in my path. Bollocks to that. Right, Emma, you're going around the field. <laughs> so there's a field here. Oh, for friggin' hell's sake. How am I going to get away past him? Who puts a bull in the field with all these girls? Fucking Egypt farmer. Do you think you can get up on there? Where can I go? I oh, do you know what. I'm going around this field. I am not. I am not going in a field <sighs> with a bull. He's literally over my path. I'm going to have to pass him. He's on the... He's on the cattle grade. The goddamn fool. Right. Right, lads and lasses, I bottled it. I wasn't going to walk past that huge bull. Chances are he wouldn't have done anything. But I'm not prepared to risk being bedded down by a muckle bull. Look, he's standing right on guard of the gate. <sighs> Hang on. That's where I'd have to go past. And that is nothing between me and him apart from a cattle grade and the dog can't go over the cattle grade and he's standing right in front of the gate so no no I'm not I'm absolutely not I'm risking it for a biscuit a bag of chips I'm not risking it for a biscuit a bag of chips a bar of chocolate, not even peanut M&M's is going to make me go through that cattle grid with that big bull sat there. So no thanks mate. No for YouTube views. I mean it would be hellish good entertainment like to be fair. However, nah, I'm not, in, I'm not in the fettle to fight a big white bull. God, I mean what if you can smell me coming into season? Can they do that? Like, they might, he might get frisky. Like, it's not that sort of channel, is it? So no, no, I'm not. What a beautiful night. It's night time now, it's six o'clock. I've been out all afternoon. I've been out six hours. Cause I've just been raking around, you know what I'm like? Raking around, chuntering on. Look, there he is. Now, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this field. Hang on, I'll show you. <laughs> what a pussy I am. But look at him, man. He's a beauty like. Oh, God, he's got massive... N look, he's looking at us. He's got massive nards as well. I literally would have had to walk past him. No. If anybody would have been prepared to walk past him... After I've just walked through his whole harem of bitches and his babbies, then make a comment below because there's no chance on this earth. Look at him, man. He's a beast. He's beautiful. You are handsome. Look at all these he's serviced. Look, on the hillside. Tons of them, tons of them. They've all got babbies. He's obviously a good breeder. That's what you want on your farm, like. Look at him, man. Look at his coat shining. No, it's not that sort of channel. I mean, how where? Beautiful. You are handsome, by the way. But I'm not prepared to walk past you. I mean, I've probably had gonna have to walk six mile away from you all now. Right, drama over. Drama averted. Look, I wouldn't have gotten over that cattle grid because I would have had to go through the fence with the dog. I mean, I could have made him jump that. He has jumped them before, but I'm not risking it for him to break his leg. Right, I have survived. I have lived to tell another tale. I mean. Looking a bit dishevelled and windswept, but hey, oh, that's what happens when you're out in the countryside. Right, to half an hour, I'm fine. I mean, look at that. It's worth getting chased and killed by cows and bulls just for that view, isn't it? There's more down there, but I've happened upon a lovely little meadow. 
with thistles and sunflowers and lots of different things that have gone over. But oh, it's beautiful. The sun shining down. Oh, look, there's a little sunflower. Oh, that sunflower. That's beautiful. That blue thing is fiddle neck, Facelia it's called. That is beautiful. Isn't that just gorgeous? It's a whole field. So I'm still on this road, it's good, two or three mile, this um, hike from the Kerr and from Kerrburn, the farm up there and I'm coming into um, Yetham and then I'll have to walk from Yetham to Kerr Yetham which is just another half a mile or so, so yeah, lush. I mean, it's quarter at seven. <sighs> Just been out all day. Look, lovely sun. There's the sunshine. The clouds are moving super fast. If anybody's high up camping tonight, about doing the hatches, because there's a windy one. Beautiful. again so obviously I took the long way around from the hills I'm now walking along St Cuthbert's way into Yetham and then I've got to go up that ugh, that hill into Kirk Yetham oh, tell you what I'm glad, glad when I'm at the car so I can change my shoes oh do you know what it's worth it look I've been all around there Worth it, worth it, worth it. Worth so feet. I've gone St Cuthbert's Way. I'm bypassing Yetham. And I'm heading round the back of Yetham. Down this little lovely woodland track. Ah, oh, just a beautiful night. Oh, I could do with a pint of cider, like. I think I might, I've got a cider. Oh, here, yeah. well, here we go. Fly, sweat, fly, sweat. No wind. Well, a little bit of wind. Um, I'm gonna have the cider I've got when I get home. It's in my fridge. I'm that. Right, I'm going because the flies are going us. Back where I started, in the beautiful village of Kirkyetham. Hello, hello, right, that is me back to the car and on my way home. That was 12, 12 and a half mile, I think it was. Ended up doing 12 and a half mile. Not a bad afternoon type. Can't wait to get 
to get home and have some, do you know what I'm craving, beans on toast. So if you made it this far and watch right to the end, you will have seen that I survived the cows and the bull. Um, so yeah, right, ta-ta for now, see you in the next one.